security is the number one priority for each infrastructure and for each data project. But how to trust your supply chain, your infrastructure, your operating system, your platform, and your workload? Sunil James, he's the Senior Director of Security Engineering at HPE, and he's here to unveil a groundbreaking security initiative. Welcome back, Sunil, and, and great to have you on our show again. Ronald, thank you for having me as well. I appreciate it. It's good to see you. You're welcome. So HP has announced the vision for a new security platform called Project Aurora. Can you explain how this project will help organizations with their cybersecurity challenges? Yeah, well, uh, Project Aurora is the culmination of quite a bit of work from HPE over the last number of years, as well as work that's been happening in the open source. Uh, what we've announced and what we've launched is effectively uh, a complete verification framework um, that measures, verifies, and attests every component of IT infrastructure uh, that HPE uh, sells. Um, we have a long way to go to get everything covered, but the intent is to basically provide our customers with the assurance that when they buy products from HPE, whether it's our ProLiance servers, our Esmeral software, and anything else that's available through GreenLake, they can rest assured that the fidelity and viability of their product has been uh, verified, measured, and attested so that there's trust uh, in place for them to be able to run their sensitive workloads and to process on their sensitive data as whole. This is really timely for us because there's been quite a bit of interest uh, around zero trust architectures. I think you and I, when we last spoke, we talked a little bit about Spiffy and Spire, uh, which are some of the open source efforts that my team and I have been intimately involved in over the last few years that are trying to bring to life zero trust concepts inside of the enterprise. What Project Aurora does is it ties together the very strong measurements and verification down to the silicon and it connects it to the cloud as well. So we're really excited about it. Well, definitely. And you were talking about Spiffy, uh, Xytale, the, the company you co-founded and which was acquired by HP, uh, was a founding member of the, the security production identity framework for everyone, which is called Spiffy. And how has HPE embraced the Spiffy and um, its ongoing work with the, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation? Yeah, so HPE is a sponsor for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. We have quite a few efforts in the organization as well. We're an active member uh, in Spiffy and Spire, two of the projects that, that are out there as well. Um, we've continued to invest. Uh, we have a dedicated team uh, building and contributing to the open source efforts, both on the standard side as well as in terms of the software around Spire. We're continuing to work with customers that are deploying Spiffy and Spire in their infrastructure. We're now seeing massive deployments of that technology, sometimes at the scale of hundreds of thousands of servers in some cases. So we're really seeing scalable use cases now where both Spiffy and Spire are really proving out to be the kinds of automated, scalable, um, zero trust building blocks that we're talking about. And in fact, those types of characteristics, automatable, scalable, uh, are very fundamental to how Project Aurora has been designed and built because we think that zero trust you know, architectures, as they scale, um, you cannot introduce manual workflows into, the, into these processes. They have to be driven by software and they have to be driven through uh, policies that you can define a priori. So uh, we're pretty excited about connecting Aurora with Spiffy and Spire over the coming months and quarters. You were addressing different use cases. So organizations operate in a highly distributed and in a hybrid world. Um, it's a very big challenge for enterprises to capture security from the edge to the cloud. How does Project Aurora help with this? Well, I think that, uh, you know, when we think about edge to cloud, it's a phrase that we've uh, uh, spoken about at HPE extensively. Edge to cloud for us, you know, is indicative of how our customers are thinking about solving their customers' problems. You know, the edge, you know, these devices, this is the edge now, right? Wherever, wherever we carry these mobile devices, wherever we go, that is the place where uh, customers are transacting, they're thinking, they're sharing information, they're receiving information. And it's important for all of our customers to be able to deliver value as close to where this is happening as possible, whether that's retail locations or anything in between. 
The thing that's interesting about edge to cloud is that if you look at an edge architecture, you look at a cloud architecture, you look at a data center architecture, there's usually a similar set of building blocks that power those architectures. There's hardware, there's an operating system, there's some sort of an abstraction layer, and then there's workloads, right? And I think that when you, if you agree with that, that there's a, a proverbial stack that can be comprised and co composed differently, whether it's edge, data center, or cloud. Um, the interesting thing for us and with Project Aurora is that it's designed to provide the same level of assurances, whether it's an edge-oriented architecture, a data center-oriented architecture, or a cloud architecture as well. And so customers can choose what aspects, or rather we should say, you know, our customers, uh, Project Aurora is only designed for HPE products today. It is not publicly available. It is designed to power some of the, the core offerings from GreenLake and more coming out. But our internal customers can choose how and where they want to plug Aurora into their offering and their backends to be able to take advantage of the verifications at, a, at, at whatever level makes sense. And so we've got flexibility, but more importantly, we deliver consistency. Right? We deliver consistency of verification from edge to cloud. And that's a really powerful narrative for our, our customers uh, and the offerings they buy from us. Yeah, and you were mentioning zero trust. So the zero trust architectures, they are now being adopted by the government as a standard requirement to improve the cybersecurity. How does Project Aurora fit into this story? It's a fundamental building block. I mean, zero trust architectures, uh, the, the whole premise of zero trust architectures is not to have any assumptions of trust just because I know something or I, I have access to a special password. Zero trust architectures effectively promote the idea that every single entity on a network, whether it's ideally a human, a, a storage system, a container, uh, an access point and everything in between, if it needs to transact, if it needs to communicate on an enterprise network, you must be able to verify the veracity and legitimacy of that entity, not only the first time, but continuously to basically provide assurances that what it is doing and communicating with is allowed and verified. And so what we're building with Aurora is really the foundation for how zero trust architectures can be built, right? The ability for us to say that this server is verified. Its components are verified. The supply chain of the components are verified. And then working our way back up to the operating system and the platform for that's uh, providing abstraction. And then eventually the end customer workloads, these critical building blocks allow for zero trust architectures to take hold, not only in cloud environments, but also on-premise existing environments as well, which is what we're really excited about offering uh, for our customers. Yeah, an exciting new security projects and really looking forward to hear more. Thank you for this great announcement as well. And for the audience, thank you for watching and we're looking forward to seeing you next time.